Hi, my name is Dustin Steiner, and today I'm going to teach you how to operate the Ventrac Ballpark Groomer and Renovator. First, I'm going to go over some the product and each of its components, and then I'm going to go over some basic configurations and some tips that will help you get started in your field maintenance. The front part of the Ballpark Groomer consists of three pieces. It consists of the renovation blades, the scar fire tines, and the leveling bar. The front renovation blades are hydraulically adjustable from the operator's seat. They allow the operator to cut edge lines, to skim in under the surface, to cut weeds out, and to also cut out high spots. The front scar fire tines are tied to the same cylinder that the renovation blades are tied to, so they will go up and down um, with that. These are used for breaking up the surface with its wet to help dry, uh, also for mixing in uh, material and for breaking up material that's come through the renovation blades to help break it up finer for the leveling bars behind it. The front leveling bar can be set at a fixed height with this pin or it can be allowed to float up and down. And this is used to carry material for, hel for helping uh, maintain a level playing surface and filling in low areas. The rear attachment consists of three standard pieces. The leveling bar, the roller, and the spike drag. This is shown with the optional brush kit, and there's also additional options of a steel drag mat and a cocoa mat. The leveling bar is used to carry material to fill in low spots. You can be more or less aggressive by how much you adjust your top link on your tractor. The roller is used to pack back in material into the low spots. Um, it also helps push back in small rocks to maintain a consistent field of play. And you can get more or less aggressive with that by how many weights you can put on the back. The spike bar on the back helps in splitting the surface in wet conditions to help aid in the drying process, to help break up compacted surfaces, and to also incorporate infield mix. The spike bar can be set to a fixed or a float position by the adjustment on the right side. The optional brush works very well in dry conditions. Some operators and users may prefer the cocoa mat depending on the type of conditions and material used on their field, but the cocoa mat and brush option will both be used in dry conditions. For wet conditions, the steel drag works very well as the most versatile option, and for wet conditions that will want to be used. The brush can be mounted at the same time as both the cocoa mat and the steel drag, so that can stay on at all times if an operator would like. I'm going to be going over four base configurations. Each configuration may require a little bit of adjustment depending on your situation, but it'll give you a good starting point. The first base configuration is for weed management. You can see the back is lifted up, it's not doing any work. The front, set in the float position from the operator's seat. The only thing that is engaged in the ground is the front renovation blades. Depending on the, how compacted the ground is, you may re be required to put weights on the front. Uh, there, is, there, is position, there is enough room for six weights. When doing weed management and cutting edge lines, a few tips in this configuration. If you can have the tractor in low range, that is, that is preferred, depending on your conditions. Uh, also weight transfer, uh, it, it can vary a little bit, but if you, you can have it off or you can have it on a little bit if you have weights on the front. And also as you're cutting out weeds, uh, if you can have someone raking them away or you rake them away, uh, do that before the next grooming step. And most, dry, most weeds, when you're cutting them, if you have small just stragglers in your field, if you cut them out, they will, they will lay on the surface um, even after grooming and they will just dry up and blow away. The second configuration is for leveling and low spot maintenance. The front attachment is placed in the float position from the operator's seat. The renovation blades are run slightly underground uh, it allows the ground to break up, uh, loosens material, allows to cut out high spots, also cut into uh, low spots. And if you're wanting to cut into low spots more, you can, you can take them down a little deeper into the ground, but you don't want to break into your base. The scar fire tines 
set just above your uh, above your renovation blades. These will allow uh, the material to break up. Uh, so when it comes to your leveling bar, then uh, it it has a good consistent material that it can it can uh, carry. Leveling bar can be placed into a fixed position, as shown here, or the pin can be pulled out and it can be in a float position, depending on how aggressive you want to be with the material. On the rear, this is also placed in float from the operator's seat. The leveling bar is engaged in the ground, and the roller is engaged. Everything else, all of the accessories and the spike bar are in the up position. It is recommended to have weights on the back. It'll compact the, the surface better, uh, so as you're filling in low spots, uh, and as you're dealing with material, it'll help fill in everything better. A few tips for leveling and low spot maintenance. Always put the tractor in low range when you're operating. Uh, while it is easy sometimes to put it in high range and go fast, uh, when leveling it is important to maintain a smooth and steady leveling process. If the faster you go, especially when you're carrying more material, the more prone you are to making a, an uneven surface actually. So keep it in low range and do it slow and steady. And on that same note, it doesn't, low spots do not solve over one, one grooming. You must go multiple times uh, over multiple directions until you can really work the holes. And then once you get it to a point where those low spots are filled in good, then you're able to really just do your basic finishing tasks and, and maintain your field really well. It is also recommended to only use this configuration when it is dry conditions. In wet conditions, uh, it's not ideal to be moving material around. So if it is wet out, make sure you're splitting your surface with the spikes so it can dry quicker. And then once it is dry, then go back through and move the material. The third base configuration is for finishing and grooming. You can see the front is in the up position and the rear is in the float position. The leveling bar is disengaged from the ground the roller is engaged, the spike bar is disengaged as well, and then whatever grooming accessory you have on the tractor, in this case, it is the brush. If you have the steel drag or you have the cocoa mat, those would be engaged. A few tips for finishing and grooming your field. It is okay to operate the tractor in high range. You're not moving much material, so you shouldn't be displacing too much, but it is important to not operate in too tight of circles as, as the tires can cause unintended compaction or ruts if you're going too fast um, and, too, and turning too sharp. It is important to switch up the way you finish your field. Don't go the same direction every time and don't start in the same point every time. If you can switch it up, then you will keep the material more consistent around your field and not deal with having it pushed out in, in one direction. The fourth base configuration is for wet field preparation. The front is in the upright position and the rear is in the float position. The leveling bar is disengaged from the ground. The roller is engaged. The spike bar is engaged. And whatever grooming accessory you have is disengaged. The spike bar is what's doing most of the work and you can adjust that. Uh, it can be either in a fixed position or in a float position and you can determine how aggressive you are with that also by the top link on the tractor. The purpose of this configuration is to allow the spikes to break up the surface to aid in the drying process of your field. It is important to allow time for your field to dry before you do any finishing on it. If your only wet areas are in low spots, you can also put your front attachment in float, keep your renovation blades up out of the ground, disengaged, your leveling bar disengaged, and just engage your scarifier tines. If you do that, then you can pull wet material out and you can incorporate dry material back in. That'll help you to move it a lot quicker and you don't have to play around with letting it dry as long. The turbine blower greatly assists in the drying process as well. And it will allow you to turn a field around a lot quicker uh, and get, keep play going, keep tournaments going. That is a very good additional piece that can be used in addition to the groomer itself. When the field dries after being spiked, it will tend to have a crusted surface. To remove this crusted surface, you'll want to put your renovation blades in just under the grooves and cut out those grooves as you, as you finish grooming your field. 
Thank you for watching this video on how to operate your Ventrac equipment. For more information, review your operator's manual or visit Ventrac.com.